Hey guys, welcome back to AdLib Talk, and this is my review for Netflix's latest animated film, The Sea Beast. But before we start with this review, don't forget to leave a like on this video if you enjoy it, and please do consider subscribing. So, The Sea Beast is an animated family adventure film directed by Chris Williams in his directorial debut. The movie is set in a world which is infested by sea monsters that harass sailors and villages, towns and cities which are located near the sea. To try and combat this, sailors called hunters sail the seas looking for these sea monsters to attack and kill them and then claim their bounty. They are kind of like these pirates, but pirates that hunt sea monsters. One of these ships is called the Inevitable, captained by the famous Captain Crow, together with his second-in-command, Jacob Holland. Now, these hunters have definitely made a name for themselves, but it is also interesting to note that they have this code by which they kind of live their whole lives, which is that to never leave anyone behind. And we see this code in action a number of times throughout the movie, especially at the start in one of the uh, better scenes of this movie. The Inevitable has, however, one final target, and that is Red Bluster. It will also be Captain Crow's final hunt, as Jacob would then take his place as captain of the ship. However, the Inevitable must hurry to pursue this target, as they are challenged by the Imperator, helmed by Admiral Hornigold, who is looking to take the Inevitable's place and eventually spell the end of the Hunters. In the meantime, we also meet another important character, orphan Macy Bramble, who manages to sneak onto the ship and hide there until she is found by Jacob. Now, Macy lost her parents to a hunt uh, and initially was very excited to follow the adventures of Captain Crow and his crew. But with time, we start to notice that her perspective towards the hunting of these sea beasts changes and that this will also have an influence on Jacob, who starts to become this kind of father figure for her. Now, I must say, I'm actually really impressed by the quality of animated movies and series coming out of Netflix. I mean, they've given us quality movies like Klaus and an amazing series like uh, Love, Death and Robots. Now, not only is the animation quality really impressive, but we are also given a really well-written story with some great characters. Let's start off with Maisie Brumble, whose discovery of the inevitable proves to be a turning point for a number of characters there. Hers is an interestingly written character. I've never been a big fan of children in movies, but here uh, her character really works because she is extremely likable and the voice acting helps a lot in this aspect but also because of the very good writing. Uh, Macy acts like a child, she speaks like a child, which is something that might seem obvious, but having endured all those Leia scenes in Obi-Wan, we really can't take that for granted anymore. Her character is of great importance, also due to the influence that she has on another really well-written and well-voiced character, Jacob Holland, the second in command on The Inevitable. At first, we see him as this great hunter, uh, bravely saving his fellow crewmates and attacking these sea beasts without question. But spending time with Macy uh, also brings about some very interesting character development from him which I can't really describe in full detail due to spoilers, but which really makes sense in the context of the story and what's going on. Uh, and especially, I love the way the relationship between himself and Captain Crow develops and the way it culminates in the final moments of this movie. Despite being a family animated movie, there are actually some really mature themes here. Uh, we see Macy reading stories about the hunters and why they were needed in the first place. And it's interesting to see Jacob correct a lot of the mistakes in these books. Um, this should be a strong lesson to kids who watch this movie. History is written by the victor. And I applaud Chris William as this is a necessary lesson for kids nowadays. And I encourage parents to focus on this message if they watch this movie with their kids. 
Now, apart from its solid themes, I simply must praise this movie about the general quality storytelling that we get. Not only are we given a fascinating sea adventure, but we have a number of twists and turns, some a little more predictable than others, true, that will still have you locked onto the screen for the two-hour running time of this movie. And this is helped especially by the very high-quality animation that we got here. Although it's not perfect, there are some small things that I will comment about. The design of the city, the animation of the sea and the ship is just perfection. The movement of the waves has never looked this good. The action is also depicted beautifully, seeing Jacob swing uh, on his ship and Captain Crow attack the monster is a truly exhilarating experience. However, the animation quality also feels a little inconsistent at times. I understand this being a family movie, but certain creatures, such as the creature Macy finds on one of the islands and calls that creature Blue, uh, just seems to be animated in a completely different style to the rest of the movie, and I feel it simply does not fit the tone that this movie goes for. However, overall, there is some truly impressive uh, animation work here, and honestly, having watched Lightyear and been severely disappointed with that, Netflix have out Pixar at Pixar in this aspect. Finally, I must praise the superb voice acting, which stars like Jared Harris, who is an excellent captain, by the way, uh, Carl Urban, who is also very good as Jacob, and my personal favorite, Zaris Angel Hater, as Maisie Bramble, who all do a bang up job at expressing their characters voices and bringing out certain nuances uh, and about how the character is feeling and only the most talented of voice actors can do that so with a superb story filled with twists and turns the whole family can enjoy powerful themes interesting characters all animated and voiced beautifully and a world that just looks fantastic and I really want to explore. I cannot praise the Sea Beast enough. I had a great time with it and highly recommend it for everyone to watch. My rating for the Sea Beast is a very, very strong 4.5 out of 5. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed that review. And if you did, don't forget to leave a like on this video and please do consider subscribing. Cheers, and I'll see you guys next time right here on AdLib Talk.